हरि 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 हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स everything is connected nothing is separate every body is connected nobody is separate and yet amazing so many people feel lonely isolated one friend wrote me that she lives a bit outside and she wakes up and the heart is paining every morning when she wakes up because of loneliness on top of that right now everything seems to dissipate there's no work right now the relationship seems to dissolve and there is that feeling of loneliness and not knowing what to do where to go <clears throat> in reality we are all connected this feeling of loneliness comes because we identify and we can create that sense of separation that feeling of loneliness is something that is hurting so many people and then they desperately try to go to see other people feeling less lonely but actually it's simply momentarily over shadowing covering up that there behind that there is that loneliness i knew that a lot when i grew up feeling strange in this world <laughs> although it was easy to have friends still i felt lonely but what am i doing here in this crazy world and then when i came with 25 to india i went to an ashram we were 80 students there i thought oh finally i'm coming home finally i'm there with people who think like who's looking for the same thing simply to find out that that feeling of loneliness was still there after one year i understood it's not exactly my thing there studying studying i wanted more to practice and i found amachi my teacher in kerala because another student knew about her she was not known at all at that time and i left that ashram in bombay and went down and we were like a little family just a few people hanging out that there with the young mystic they felt finally finally i have come home <laughs> simply to find out after some time there it was still that sense of loneliness so my friend it doesn't matter really whether you live amongst people or outside the feeling of loneliness has nothing to do with it <clears throat> eventually i had to learn that i'm creating that sense of being separate and that creates that feeling of loneliness and then 
there is the tendency that one thinks a bit in self-pity and then it starts to really hurt. Let's be careful not to slip into the trap of self-pity. Self-pity is making everything so much more difficult. I had my ideas, what I wanted. Things seemed to go in a way totally smoothly and in a way I didn't get what I wanted and there was that resistance, that rebellion against what is happening, generating self-pity and along with that self-pity, that sense of loneliness. Eventually, I started to give up that and that painful feeling that has been there with me for long for a lot in my early life, started to disappear. You see, you can could change your place and live amongst people and have more contact with people. Momentally, it can cover up that feeling of loneliness, but the cause is in ourselves. Have a good look at yourself and see where the resistance is coming in, the resistance to the circumstances. We need not weakly as a victim accept circumstances. We can try to change them. That is perfectly all right. But first we have to accept, okay, the situation is as it is. <laughs> and then I can bring my creativity into it, my creative energy into it, and may shape it in a way that it's more to my liking, but it's not sure that it works. It may work or it may not work. But that feeling of loneliness has its root in that resistance, resisting the fact what I'm experiencing, and then slipping into self-pity. And there, that sense of loneliness becomes painful. Because of, the, of your external circumstances, I cannot give you a practical <laughs> advice about finding some work because you have a bit of special work. What you have to do is just to open your heart that you are ready for new possibilities. And then when they come along, you can grab them and go for it. We have to learn to have confidence in ourselves. And then even if we go through periods where the circumstances are not favorable, then if we are not resisting, if we learn to accept the situation is as it is, then, does, then we don't generate self-pity. And if we don't do that, then we have all that creative, beautiful energy at our disposal. But if we slip, down that road of resistance and self-pity and loneliness, there it's eating up our life force. And then we are also closing much easier all the possibilities that are there. But even then, it's not wrong to change the circumstances, to influence the circumstances that, they, that we are like them, better, that we are more comfortable. <clears throat> but don't make your well-being dependent on it. 
you are complete in yourself. That sense of completion, that sense of well-being is coming out of yourself. You are the source of your happiness. It's not coming from the circumstances. It's not coming from a partner. It's not coming from a professional situation. It's coming out of ourselves. That joyousness of existence is always there. We just have to learn to relax and to open up to it. And then it comes to the surface. And then even in unfavorable circumstances, we don't feel that sense of separation. We don't feel that sense of loneliness. We don't feel that pain of being cut off. <clears throat> you are the source of your fulfillment. You are the source of your happiness. We just have to learn to let go. It's always there. It's never absent. But we are creating all these barriers that we cannot experience it. When somebody has a desire and struggles to fulfill this desire and then that desire gets fulfilled, then they feel happy. But what is really happening that for a moment there is not that resistance. For a moment one lets go because the external circumstances are to our liking and then we let go. And there bubbles up that joyousness of existence. And then that feeling comes and happy in the circumstances and in the mind, in the memory of the, that we associate our sense of happiness with the circumstances. But they had only indirectly something to do with it. That our mindset was in, agree, in an agreeable position with the circumstances, didn't feel like resisting, and then relaxed. And in that relaxation, that joyousness of existence simply bubbled up. And we can learn to do so no matter what is happening, no matter the circumstances, whether we are in a relationship or not in a relationship, whether things are going smoothly or not smoothly, whether we are living amongst people or alone, out a bit in a solitary spot, that sense of fulfillment is always there. The joyousness of existence is always there. We can access it when we learn to accept the circumstances and relax. Not as a victim, accept the circumstances, not like, oh, I cannot do anything about it, but just accept things are as they are, and then I can give my creative impulse into it, and it may work out that it steers this story in another direction. You told me also you just don't know which way to go. Then you don't need to decide which way to go. Be strong in yourself. Connect with yourself. Learn to relax that. And then Gradually, it will crystallize itself out by itself in which direction you have to go. Then you can have your eyes open, your ears open, and as the possibilities come along, when you are open like this, then you recognize them easier and they may manifest. We are all connected. That sense of separation is an illusion that we have created with our thinking, with our feeling, with repeating those things, thoughts and feelings over and over, consciously and unconsciously. There we have created 
that wall. And they're inside that wall, that's me, and outside it's all the others. And there is that sense of being cut off. We are never cut off. We are connected with all. There is. There is all one. There is the multiplicity. We are a unique aspect of that all oneness, but connected with everything. Nothing is really separate. I hope you will find your way. Hario, Hario. <clears throat> All right, my friends. Now I'm asking you, is there anyone who would like to say something? You are welcome to come in. <clears throat> Hello, Dial. Oh, uh, it's our... Uh, oh, is that I, Dial? okay. No, you come, Ravi. Dial will come after. <laughs> can you hear me, Bernard? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> so, um, where do I start? I, um, I uh, have been practicing. Okay, so my question is around tears that come out of, I guess it's longing. Um, I, for, I mean, it's it's been for, for me for years now. I'm, I'm used to just tears coming when I feel more connected or I think of Amma or the divine, et cetera. And um, I don't really think about it. I've never, I've never really analyzed it much because it just feels real. I feel like I think of Amma and the emotion is there and it feels real. Um, but it's also um, a bit, uh, it's, it's a bit painful to the emotions. Like, so, I mean, I kind of feel like there's an unburdening happening mm -hmm. and sometimes, and I also feel that they come up because of love. There's a, a sense of love, but I also think maybe I'm just wondering, is that a sense of, it's a, the sense of separation. It's that pain coming up because, um, yeah, it's not a comfortable feeling, yet that comes from a space of feeling this devotion. So can you talk about it a bit more? <clears throat> right. It's again the same thing. When you feel that longing, but you accept that feeling is there, that longing is there, and actually through that longing, you are more consciously connecting with that essence, whether you call it the essence or yourself or your guru or God, it doesn't really matter. But when you feel more of that connection, then uh, you said uh, it's normal for you that tears are coming and tears are nothing wrong. Tears are often very good, but it's important that we are not slipping in that mood, oh, poor me, I'm feeling separate. It's again, if we start mm. to slip into self-pity, then it becomes very painful. <laughs> I remember I was, when I came to Amma, I was so, I was mad. <laughs> I had that fixed idea, I want to read something, I want to read something, but there was all that self-importance there, me, me, I, the person, want something. And it felt extremely painful. And uh, I used to complain, I'm going to do something, make something happen. <laughs> I can't bear it anymore. And once Amma said to me, when I, when Amma used to call to God, there was so such a bliss in it. And then I, I was so shocked and I said, oh, uh, my experience is the exact opposite. I feel miserable. <laughs> but later I understood, right, the difference is simply whether I'm bringing that self-importance and self-pity in it and me, 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 I want something. But if you are connecting to that pure longing, 
for infinity, for God, then there is already such a joyousness in it because you connecting stronger with your own essence. So it depends whether those tears are tears of misery and self-pity or whether they are tears of joy. And then they are perfectly fine. If we feel miserable and self-pitying, then it's good to have a good look at ourselves and see, okay, I want to connect with the essence, but then at the same time, I don't want to let go of that. Me personally, it's not that I want to be free of that and be conscious of the essence, but it's more that I, me, the person, I want something extra, some some special kick, <laughs> like uh, being enlightened, but being in me enlightened and it's not possible that me I have to let go so if you feel that longing and the tears are coming and you feel fine with it then it's all right it can have a lit little bit of painful touch and even that can be blissful <laughs> but if you feel more and more miserable then you know, okay, there I'm going in the wrong direction because there I'm slipping into self-pity. Me, poor me, I'm not getting what I want. Yeah. That pure longing is totally natural. That self, that essence is calling the attention to come back. We have forgotten what we are. We have forgotten that we are a divine being and somehow got entangled in that mental stuff and creating that idea of a personality and there is always that call from the self come home come home so that longing is natural it's there in everybody simply people try to fill that longing with all kinds of crazy things and it never works but if you feel that pure longing and then you feel more connected and it may result sometimes that tears are flowing down your cheeks or, or not. But then you feel even just from the longing already, you feel a sense of fulfillment and the joyousness that shows you that you are looking in the right direction. Thank you, Werner. Shall we leave it at that? Yeah, yes, on, on that, yes. I've just got one more question. Oh, yes, um, you're welcome. <laughs> so um, I've talked to you about having health problems in the past, and, and the, I've had them for many years now, but in the last eight months, I've injured my ankle and then, well, both my ankles. And, and that was actually, it was mostly from wearing really bad shoes, but I had the pain and I kept on walking. Um, but since then I sprained my, well, my, my left ankle was still healing. Both of them were, but my left is worse than I sprained that ankle. And then two weeks ago, again, like I, I injured again and then, um, and it was still injured. And then two weeks ago, I dropped a piano chair <laughs> it, I, on my ankle. It fell on my ankle. Um, oh, yeah when I was moving from sitting, meditating on my stool, moving to lying down, I was sitting on a piano chair and it fell on my ankle. And then today I injured my ankle. Um, oh. So it's kind of like as it gets better and then it gets worse. And um, I do feel like, um, uh, like, like the last time when the piano chair fell on my ankle I just thought okay I've really got to stop focusing on for feeling sorry for myself or feeling and focusing on the pain or where I'm at and detach from that and just feel connected to that presence mm. that healing presence and that's been really good and that's been powerful and I've been practicing that um, not all the time but a lot of the time and then this injury happened again today and I don't, I guess I don't know how long it'll go for. Um, and when you were talking about um, loneliness then and how to manage loneliness, it was just perfect because it just, it, I mean, it, it highlighted already my plight of uh, 
how I need to work with my foot moving forward again. And I'm already kind of knew that because that's what I've been doing in the last two or three weeks, but it just highlighted more and more. Yes, you can't slip up and feel sorry for yourself or feel like your ankle is wounded, uh, as in um, make it into a, don't give it too much attention, take care of it, but don't give it too much attention and focus on that presence. So I feel, I mean, I feel like I am doing all the right things, but I also, and this might not be a question um, as such, but I think maybe I need to get a puja reading, a puja or something like that. I feel like I'm in a stage of my life where things are just injuries are happening. Do you have anything to comment on any of those things? <clears throat> it may happen that you have a period where things are just going wrong all the time. <laughs> and uh, it seems you injure your ankle again and again. So <laughs> there is some real karma manifesting there. <laughs> if you want, you can do a puja about it, but uh, you can also, you can do both, but uh, you can also really focus in your own inner healing capacity and let that flow. You said uh, I shouldn't uh, focus too much on, on the injury and you're right, but uh, you can, if you focus, focus on yourself. In yourself, you are whole. Everything is fine. And that capacity of healing, if we relax, if we let it happen, flows into the manifestation. And then it's much easier to heal injuries. And actually it can also heal karma that it is uh, not having to manifest so much. We can change the karma. Even if karma is that uh, things are going very wrong, if we somehow let our inner beauty and inner healing capacity flow in the current of life, then it can neutralize also a lot of negativity and bad karma that has to come. That doesn't give you a security check that uh, after that nothing will happen to you anymore, but uh, it's certainly reducing those events. And even if they happen, you can deal with them easier. If on top of that, you feel that's the right thing for you to do, to have a do puja done for it, you can very well do so. But your contribution is the more important one. That uh, exactly not slipping into poor me, it's happening to me again, why me all the time? <laughs> Always poor me, it's <laughs> suffering <laughs> from that. That is the best way to just throw away our energy for nothing. Whereas if you can accept, okay, there it is, there it is again. But then if you focus on the injury and the pain, accept that it's there, that the pain is there, that the injury is there, but at the same time, turn the attention to that which is aware of, to that which makes the experience possible, that space of wholeness where, where you cannot be hurt, where you cannot be injured. That aspect is always there in everybody. And the more you connect with that, the more that wholeness, that healing quality is flowing into the manifestation into your body and also in the current of events that are happening in your life. Great. Thank you, Werner. You're welcome. Ario. Ario. <laughs> Ario. Okay, Dial. You try to come in? Would you like to come in now? Ah, uh, there you are. I cannot hear you, Dial. Uh, 
have you said anything? Because I'm still not hearing anything from you. I can see your picture small, but uh, it's not getting big because I don't hear a sound from you, your side. Somehow it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> Anyhow, happy to see you out of your month's retreat, but you can try to figure things out and then come in later, huh? If you want to say something, I see that you are talking, but I can't hear anything. <laughs> okay, let's. We'll try again later. Huh? <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome to do so. There is that space, that aspect in every one of us that can simply not be heard. It's never absent. It's always there. We can make that in our home. Learn to bring the attention back where it should be, where it is meant to be. We have learned to do the opposite, to be always all over the place. Identifying with whatever is happening, whatever we are doing. <laughs> Instead of being aware, there is always that aspect that is completely okay, at ease, at peace, joyous, naturally joyous, not created by anything, that cannot be heard. Somehow or other, we have to bring the attention back to that and learn to relax in that. And the more we are doing it, the more we can open our heart and the more that sense of wholeness, the sense of being at ease, at peace and fulfilled is flowing also in the manifestation, in the expression, in the bodies, in the subtle bodies and in the gross body in the current of events, things are not smooth right now in the world. There is a lot of negativity, a lot of misery, a lot of influences that try to pull people into despair. And in spite of that, we can let that sense of completion, that wholeness flow in the current of our experience and it will have an influence for our physical health, our energetic health, our mental health, our intellectual health, our spiritual health. <laughs> in between I have seen that Dial has tried again to come in. Dial, is it working now? You, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> very uh, good. <laughs> yes, I completed such a day retreat. I am very happy to share. It's, there was very perfect conditions. I have separate room attached with bathroom. And I have silent cell with ventilation and heating system. I can make perfect temperature and air in it and i have meditation hall with couple of teachers and wonderful powerful meditators around 
was about 50 people and everybody was most of people was working very seriously yeah so i meditate about 11 hours daily and it, i was enthusiastic most of the time no lazy no boring so it was my achievement because usually a long time retreat i feel boring so i was able to work seriously a long time so and i want to just share it to yeah. you that's very really nice. So all these 50 people, they were staying for 30 days? Yes, 30 days. Ah, people, yeah. great. Yeah. Some of them was very serious medita meditators, not like me. They was meditating. <laughs> like you. <laughs> not like me, yeah. Uh, serious were, like you. <laughs> I was meditating morning and evening. Uh, I mean, night, day and night, I was meditating some of people. And Goenka was meditating, uh, motivating us, uh, just one day more very seriously, one day more very seriously. Uh -huh. So it worked somehow, it's possible. Yeah. So, and I wonder why you are not Vipassana teacher, because you can have many students in wonderful conditions and you can lead them towards liberation. You asking <laughs> that me? Why am yeah. I not? <laughs> I am what I am, <laughs> and I'm playing the role that I'm playing. <laughs> then I want to ask you, when you come to India, what was your opinion about Goenka? Uh, do you know about him? No, at that time I didn't know him. I learned about Goenka during the time then when I was in India. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then one more question I have, uh, because I have listen many discourse now about liberation and Buddha path and um, uh, Goenka said and other Buddhist teaching said Buddha in vain in vain in vain new path that time was no such path and he in vain new technique of Vipassana and different between new technique and that was before that um, people go into deep stages of concentration and then they go into very high uh, paradise for a very long time but still they remain in the view of sansara uh -huh. and after many many years they will come down and they not finally liberated and buddha only find a real way what do you think about it mm. i mean everyone who ever tells you only this one or only that way is going to do it you need not take that so serious <laughs> there have been real liberated beings in the east and in the west with a religion or without a religion so this is not true, but uh, instead of saying that this is the only way they should, uh, they would better say, okay, this is certainly a way you can go about it and it is very helpful. But unfortunately, I think what Gwenka did was great. He did uh, bring a possibility for so many people to have those courses and to get sincerely into meditation and get sincerely more alert about themselves. Unfortunately, there is that thing that uh, he denies the value of every everything else. And that is not necessary uh, because what this, what really matters is not the technique that we are using. Techniques if we are responding to a technique, then the technique is helpful, but it's still a crutch for the mind to help us to connect with the essence. And people can connect with the essence in different ways. And what really matters is not the technique, but our own sincerity, whether we really, really want the naked, essence, the naked truth, or whether we are satisfied with just uh, having some spiritual achievement and then and 
settle down that and enjoy that little achievement. So it's not a question of the technique, it's a question of our sincerity, whether we truly, truly long to come home to that original essence there is. Yeah, maybe maybe you're right. So I will think about it and continue practicing. Uh, so we're going to speak in the terms that not connecting to something higher. He speak about purification. Yes. Deep level. And right. some people just uh, go into deep state of concentration and forget about uh, cleaning or unconsciousness mind. And uh, is it the case of some gurus? Do you think, for example, somebody going to some very deep samadhi, but still some sankaras is left and uh, after some time it will mm. create uh, samsara? Well, uh, what he says, uh, I'm perfectly agreeing that uh, Actually, it's not really a path of achievement. It's a path of cleaning, a path of getting rid of whatever stands in the way that is naturally there. It's here, it's now, it's not something that is ever absent, what we are looking for. And the, now our path is not really getting somewhere and achieving something, something our path is becoming more and more aware what we are doing, how we are creating obstacles and learn to let that go, learn not to do that anymore. And of course you can achieve quite nice spiritual states, but still there is, you come out of that state, a state is an experience. You come, uh, it comes, you are in that state and the state goes and there the experience may still have its effect when it's gone. It's purifying in itself, that experience. But uh, then when somebody comes out of an experience like this, then it's good to be alert and still have a good look at oneself and see where we are out of habit, creating all those tensions, all those bottlenecks. The essence is not an experience. What you are is not an experience. For, But consciously approaching what you are, you may have all kinds of wonderful experiences, and there's nothing wrong with that. The, those experiences, they are purifying, but we need not get hooked and obsessed with it. Let them come as they come, Let enjoy them as they are there, and let them go as they go, and then just be here now and alert. <laughs> so one can have all kinds of uh, great experiences and maybe uh, developing abilities which are beyond everybody's abilities, but still have to have their own stuff being worked out. Yeah. I understand. And then we come back to the question of sincerity. If yes. uh, the person is sincere, he will go further, not stop. If you are sincere, then you never stop, no matter what nice things you are achieving. <laughs> you just continue, keeping that alertness. And uh, being aware until that attention really sinks deep into that and you don't lose it anymore. Yes, yes, I will continue. Thank you for your support, Werner. Adio. You're welcome. Adio. Adio. <clears throat> All right. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. Let me come to one aspect Dial has mentioned. Like, then there was the teaching, yes. Uh, 
many have achieved high spiritual states, high spiritual concentrations, but then it was only the Buddha who showed the way out beyond that. This is something that happens in all the religions. And also spiritual schools that are not necessarily direct, directly attached to a religion, to an organized religion. That somehow or other, those who follow that path often want to claim this is the only way if you really want to find the essence, the real. It's a, just a human thing that comes in sneaking on so many levels. It comes in <laughs> on the most mundane levels. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm right. People want to be right. They fight with each other. They discuss with each other. And then it's not more a discussion about what is right or wrong, but I want to be right. And this gets subtler and subtler, and it sneaks in also in the spiritual teachings that this is the way to go about it. This is the highest, the best, the straightest, or many times the only way when you get, want to be really free. You are free. You are that divinity. You have never been anything else. We imagine, we dream to be something else. We have forgotten what we are. And then we dream our story, we dream our personality, we dream all the experiences that we have. They are there, real as an experience, but they are dreamlike because we have forgotten what is it that really makes the whole experience possible? And what is needed is that we somehow or other detach from that obsession, with that involvement in that story, and come back to the source, to that which makes the experience possible. And people are different. What works better for one does not necessarily work for another. People are different about it. There's nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> there is no highest approach, no better approach than others. What makes an approach straight, direct or not, is the sincerity of the one who goes on that way. If he sincerely, really, with purity, long for truth, then somehow we'll find the way. And within, if we need guidance on the way, the guidance will come. If it helps us to learn a technique, then we will get the technique, we we'll learn it and we'll benefit from it. But the technique is just a help. It's not essential. And so nobody who claims that only this one can help you need you need not take anybody serious who says that if the technique helps you then by all means use the technique because the technique may have helped many people if you resonate with it if you feel comfortable with it then it's perfectly all right but that doesn't mean we have also to pick up that other aspect and then think, okay, this is the only way, and then somehow trouble other people who do something else, thinking we it's our duty to tell them, if you really want to get anywhere, you have to come and do the same thing as I am doing. This is the usual human game. It's not necessary. It's not true. What helps us really to overcome that obstacle of slipping always, even if it's in subtler ways, in that creating of that me, 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 who is separate. 
creating that separation simply maybe with the thought that me, I'm a, an advanced Sadak, an advanced spiritual seeker and feeling better than other people. That it's the same story, it's the same game. And if you are sincere, sooner or later, we recognize it and we let that go. And it sneaks in subtler and we recognize it and let that go. And it sneaks in subtler and we recognize it and let that go. That is sincerity. And we can do that with a technique on a particular path or, with, or without a technique, just simply naturally doing so. And if a technique is resonating, if we feel helped by learning certain steps, then by all means, let's learn those steps, always knowing they are just a help. It's not those steps that are producing reality. You are that reality. You never have not been that reality. You are that now, you have been it, you will be. It's never anything else. We imagine all kinds of things. We have slipped away with our conscious experience from that. We have forgotten that it is so. And so we try to reach something. We have to come home and find that which is. And how we are doing it doesn't matter at all. So, like, if it happens that somebody is very attracted to a certain way to practice, a certain technique for meditation, a certain whole spiritual religious approach. If one feels attracted to that and resonates, then by all means, pick that up, learn that, practice it. And if you hear on the way this kind of stuff, then you can also just let that aspect pass by and pick out that which is helpful, that which helps you to connect with yourself, with God, with divinity, with whatever <laughs> you want to call it. It's there for the asking. And if you're asking with sincerity, then we'll find our way. And we may on the way have a teacher who helps us learn a technique that helps us, but it's still just bringing the attention back home to ourselves. That is the path. <laughs> and it's not only the Buddha who has pointed in that direction. It has been, it, there had been always great teachers in all the cultures that have pointed it out to the people in the language they could understand in what direction to look. People may after that have corrupted the purity of their teaching, but still the spirit may be there. And the teaching is never, truth is such and such and such and such, but the teaching is how to catch the attention and point it in the right direction. And the truth as it is, cannot be put in words, cannot be put in a teaching. So no teaching can be more right about this than another teaching. <laughs> what matters is that we pick up that pointer and flow along with it and come to the essence, what is meant with the teaching, not what the words are saying and not what the different techniques are saying. <laughs> okay, I'll drop it now. And I'm asking you again, is there anyone who would like to come and say something? You're welcome. Hello. Hello, Leela. Um, so what I'm asking now, or 
Yeah, what I want to say, it's also a question. Um, I so often feel that I want this one person, teacher or whoever, that I can call anytime when I'm really, really in pain, emotional pain. I can call them and they can take the pain away. Just like that. Um, uh, I don't understand. You do have such a person or you would like to have such no, a person? No, I would like to have such a person. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I I feel, yeah, this week I'm, I've been doing some work with the inner speech. Mm -hmm when the bad guy came and telling me mm. that I can't do it or that it's so painful and all that. And um, I could literally send the bad guy away and come back. So it, yeah. But still, sometimes it's connected also with what you said about loneliness. When I feel lonely, I want to call somebody, a friend or so, but then I say it's not it's not what I need. It's not a friend that I need at this time. I, I want a teacher. Yeah. Somebody who who I believe they know. And I'm sure they know, and I'm sure I know too. But I tend to, you know, kind of put it away, want to put it on somebody else and get the answer yeah but you know the teacher's job is not to do what you are, are now be describing teachers, the teacher's job is to to become make you aware that you are capable of doing it yourself i know yeah you've said it so many times <laughs> right you have that teacher in yourself. And if you have an external teacher, then that teacher's job is to point in the right direction that, look, it's already there. It's not that me, I as a person need another person that whenever I have a real problem, I can uh, go to that person and that person takes the problem away. But sometimes a teacher may, for the moment, take the problem away but actually should not do that too often because the the one who is being taught should not get lazy <laughs> but become stronger in the confrontation and every time when we confront a problem and learn how to deal with it we come stronger out of it and that's what we are yeah. here for right hmm. yeah Right. <laughs> As if I didn't know that. Just, yeah. As if you didn't know that. But of course, sometimes when one feels a bit shaken up by whatever happens, what the people may say, what goes through our mind, then the feeling is there. it would be helpful to connect and talk to somebody. And sometimes it's there, the opportunity, and then why not take it? But sometimes it's not there, and then that's not the reason to despair, because you are capable, you are strong enough to do it yourself also. Yeah, or weak enough. I'm not sure it's it's that strong. It's something about being able to hold, hmm. hold, hold the pain, hold, um, whatever. Hmm. And as you said so many times, just uh, relax in it and not let it uh, threaten and scare. But often this is what happens, but, you know, the, the fear and the threat. So um, right. I know what I have to do there, but sometimes it's really difficult. Right. And sometimes they come. 
and when they come you cannot just tell uh, don't come they still come no <laughs> right no, no. but then when they no, come that's... then you can accept them instead of fighting with them okay there is the fear there is the threat and then don't struggle with it but let it come let it manifest but instead of getting sucked into it and overwhelmed by it stay in that position of observing what it is doing to your experience let the fear be there let the threat be there but at the same time see what it is doing to your body see what it is doing to you energetically emotionally intellectually observing all this then you are stepping out of the current and are not becoming a victim of those emotions that come up and actually you are in that way benefiting from the situation by by doing so you are getting stronger it's not that we have to somehow learn how to get stronger simply by being alert in the present and not getting sucked into the emotions and into the situations and even if we get sucked in then when we recognize it's happened again there we collect ourselves and see what's happening right now and observe again yeah. and relax and in that way those emotions they still may come but they lose their power they cannot more push you around yeah it doesn't take the sincerity <laughs> sincerity honesty with, with myself right okay Werner <laughs> <laughs> okay let's leave it at that for now Adios. Thank, Adios. You. thank you Adios. 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 I see Nava you opened the camera you would like to come in you are still muted you have to unmute yeah. now I can hear you yes oh, hi um I would like to continue speaking about teachers. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have I have never had a teacher mm. who didn't have a, a teacher. Yeah. Nobody nobody that I know has done it on their own. Yeah. And sometimes I feel frustrated uh -huh. because there's so many teachers out there. Yeah. But I mostly learn by example, not not by what someone says, but how they feel to me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so I just came back from India. I was in uh, Bodh Gaya. Oh, yeah. Mm. With uh, a wonderful teacher. Yeah. And I feel like because of that, um, I don't know exactly how to put it, but I experience things I've never experienced. Mm. Uh, it's not that the teacher did it for me, yeah. but the teacher was an example. Yeah. Um, I, I felt like I saw God everywhere. God was just everywhere and in us and in everything. And when that happened, it's like everything made sense. Yeah. Everything that never makes sense, everything makes sense all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's um, It was no longer something I heard or something I read. It just all made sense. Yes, wonderful. Including, <laughs> including the whole idea of self, which so yeah. clearly just... It became very, very different. Um, having said that, it, it's a, a point of frustration for me because um, I think a teacher is very important. And again, there's so many teachers out there, but not many that I feel like I can really, really learn from. And so um, I don't even know if there's a question there. It's It's a difficulty I have. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and you feel frustra frustrated because you think then uh, I should have a teacher with me all the time or 
because you don't know which teacher to approach or whether or whether or not you should have a teacher? No, I, I would like a teacher and I have different teachers, yeah. but not teachers that I feel that can really set an example of, of, of what it's like. Mm. That, that's what I'm talking about. Right. Um, you know, yes. I can learn a little bit from this one and a little bit from that one. Yeah. But it took the combination of being in India and, and the teacher for me to um, experience these things that I never have before. Yes. The ultimate teacher is your own self. You are that ultimate teacher that you are looking for. External teacher job is to point out, look, the teacher is already there in yourself. Mm -hmm. Focus on that one. That teacher is always with you. And then if it's necessary in your story externally that you spend time with a teacher, the teacher somehow gives you a helping hand in a particular stage, in a particular situation, then this will happen. So don't be sorry about not being with a teacher because you think a teacher must be there. That ultimate teacher is always there. You cannot miss that teacher because you are that teacher <laughs> yourself. Connect with that. And then be open. And when it's necessary, somehow or other, something externally becomes the teacher and helps you at that particular point. And it can be an official teacher and you feel his example, her example, is somehow inspiring you to make a step. But then if you are really connecting with that ultimate teacher, then suddenly anything, suddenly for a moment can be that manifestation of the teacher. It can be a situation that you're observing. It can be a child that comes and tells you something. It can, it can be observing animals and nature and something makes click and you are clear uh, what the next step is. So don't feel frustrated for not be living in a situation with, to be always with a teacher where you can always see that example. That example, that teacher is in yourself. Just open up to that and then that starts to consciously manifest. It's manifesting anyhow, simply we don't see it. <laughs> it's manifesting all the time. Simply we don't see the lessons, we don't see the pointers, and then we feel frustrated. But if you connect consciously with that ultimate teacher, more and more you become aware you're learning all the time. You're having every situation is in a way a manifestation of the teacher and helps us to open up a bit more or take a step or get a bit stronger. I, I think part of it is fear. As you're talking, I'm thinking part of it is fear. Um, because um, it, it seems to me, I asked myself this morning, so I've had these experiences. What does it mean about how I live? And um, I just sat with that. And the answer was, I live with joy and I live with love. And, um, and, and so now I'm back home and I wonder, you know, will I be able to stay connected to that or will life slowly kind of chip away at it and I will forget? Both may happen, mm -hmm. but, but even if you feel it's fading away, you still have the memory and then don't uh, feel fall into the trap of feeling bad and frustrated about it. Then you can accept, okay, for some time it has been made a bit easier. Thank you for that grace. 
But now mm -hmm. I'm back to the working place and I have to learn to open up in that direction that it can come back. Try, don't try to get the same thing back, but then just learn to open and then it can come back in a similar way or even much more expensive. So even if it happens that the intensity of what you're feeling because you are close to that experience still, that uh, is slowly getting less than still you have the memory. And don't, because of the memory, desperately try to come back to that state, but just accept it as an inspiration. Like you say, the teacher is more a teacher to true example and inspiration than mm -hmm. through the words. And so your own past experience can be used in the same way. Okay, even if the experience is not as clear anymore as before, then still you can use it as an inspiration not to try to pre reproduce it, but an inspiration to open the heart and connect with that teacher, with yourself. And then it will manifest maybe similar, maybe differently, but it will manifest more and more in your day-to-day -day life. Hario, you. you're welcome. Hario, Hario. Yeah. Lila is I, back. Hello. <laughs> I, I came back right away. Yeah. Because while you were talking with um, Nava, I thought about teacher authority and inspiration. Authority. Um, so Actually, each one of them has a different role in our life, if I can put inspiration as their role. But authority and teacher, I think we, at least I maybe tend to mix. I mean, I have a need. I remember the other, in one of the sessions, I spoke about an adult, but I'm not completely an adult. Sometimes I need an authority. But what really touched my heart was when you spoke about inspiration, to be inspired by something or somebody from inside or from outside can be very, very powerful and supportive, supporting. And just um, realize now, just to notice this for myself, the power of, of inspiration, then I don't have to put on somebody being a teacher or being authority because inspiration is like open space. It's in a way it's all over. You just have to notice it. Right, right. <laughs> it's not somebody or something. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the one of the essence of connection, really. So it's not a question, but if you like to make a, say something yeah. about it. Right. As, as Nava put it, it's more that their example is touching her. What does it mean? She feels inspired by somebody who is manifesting something that touches her heart. And that inspiration can be from a teacher. It can be from a memory in our own life. It can come from anywhere you may open a, a book, which has nothing to do with all your spiritual thinking and questioning. And still, whatever you read there hits home and you feel, ah, somehow it was meant that I just read these words because they feel inspiring. Mm -hmm. Without inspiration, it's a very dreary story. <laughs> it's a very sad story. It's a very colorless story. But if we are connecting as good as we can 
with the essence, or as I called it with Nava, with that ultimate teacher, your own self, as good as you can, then somehow the inspiration that we are needing, that encourages you, that makes the whole story more colorful, will start to manifest more and more. And you can see it in somebody who teaches, who is an authority, <laughs> Or somebody who is not an official authority is the, and teaches, or it may come just from anybody from your neighbor who just at the moment has somehow tuned into the current and some inspiring words may come out of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or just seeing some people's action may be totally inspiring, not so much what they are talking. <laughs> Yeah, I live like that, actually. Yes, great. Yes. Thank you, Vernon. You're welcome. Yeah. Are you? Are you? There comes Andreas. Hello. <laughs> I, I think I asked this before, but I, I'm still not clear about it. Like, when, when Dial described the meditation practice, Yes, and it, there's a lot of effort, and the, the people seem to make progress in that tradition. But when when you talk about it, or another teacher that I like, Adya Shanti, sometimes says like um, enlightenment. To just use that word, is like s s slipping on a banana peel. It it happens more accidentally, mm -hmm. and. So is all the 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 meditation practice and the training just like preparing the ground? Can yes. you elaborate on that a little bit more? Right, it's like preparing the ground, but uh, at the same time, still your experience slowly is blossoming, <clears throat> even if it's not shifting totally into a new perspective. Somebody who practices who tries to be alert that experience of every moment from now to now moment experience is much more open and richer than somebody who never cares about any such thing and goes half asleep through the life so it's doing both it's basically a preparation that such a slip on the banana peel may happen <laughs> But at the same time, it's also making your life already much more colorful and deeper and more satisfying, fulfilled by practicing, because that helps you to be, to remember, to connect. And the more you are doing so, the more you are connecting, the more you are really living your life and consciously connecting then there is so much of a different depth in it, so much of a greater intensity in it. So it's both. <laughs> okay. Also, your, your psychophysical manifestation has to be uh, prepared somewhat that it is possible, even if it's not the ultimate enlightenment, but even just to rotate into a new broader perspective and then hold that energy otherwise the nervous system cannot deal with it so the practice is also doing that preparing the manifestation to be capable of deal of dealing with more energy a broader energy a broader perspective completely focused on the object and completely present with it? Is that some kind of enlightenment too? Well, as you know, I don't really feel very comfortable with that word, enlightenment, because it's so much misused. But, of course, the moment you really connect with the timelessness of the present, you are in tune with yourself, 
with God, with what is. So you can call it, it's like a, a drop <laughs> of the true experience. At least it shines through much easier. Okay. Okay. <laughs> can, can I have a question? Sorry? Can I ask another question? Ah, yes, sure. It's, it, it's another job, subject. Right now I feel a lot of resistance helping my uncle because I have to have he's almost 90 and uh, today in the morning his life partner died and he's getting sad and he has a little bit of dementia so he lives away from me. I always have to drive there and what makes the, a lot of the resistance is that in, in a way, he takes advantage of me, of my help. Because then he makes me work in the garden all the time. And if I say, okay, I want to go home now, he says, no, no, we have to continue. And it's always a battle and it's like tiring. And I, I, I helped him a lot before. And sometimes he's not, he's a difficult person and he's not very nice. He, sometimes he calls me an idiot when I do something in the garden, which he doesn't. He thinks I should do it differently because he's a gardener. So I, I feel a lot of resistance about that. But on the other hand, I feel the pull to help him because like, I, I have to go there today and tell him he doesn't even know yet that his life partner died. So I have, yeah, I feel I should be there because he, he's going to be very sad and need some, He's because he's always completely denying death and a old age and sickness, even so he's almost 90. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, you know. Like, yeah, his, his life partner, she said she said a heart insufficiency. She's yeah, she couldn't walk five meters without sitting down. And he always asked, like, why can't the doctors do anything about it? And okay. Um so it it's kind of a very yeah, I always feel this resistance to go there because the best thing would be I go there today and maybe I should even go there tomorrow because he he otherwise would be very he's going to be very sad and sit in a half dark room all day if I don't go there mm. uh, yeah but it, it feels like a, and I have to I feel like the responsibility for him is like a drag on me because I just had that two years ago with my mother who had severe dementia so I feel oh I don't want to do it have one in one part the other positive. Okay, you must do it. And okay. Right. And you know perfectly well uh, somehow you know that you have decided to do so. <laughs> uh, you cannot uh, if that was not the case, you could just say, Okay, I'm not doing so, I won't make arrangements and I don't have to do anything with with the whole situation. But obviously deep down you have decided it's your job. To some extent, at least, you still can maybe uh, arrange other help that he has also in different way help. But it's clear that you have decided whether you have decided it consciously or but something in you decided that uh, you have to do so. So better when that feeling comes that oh, oh that you feel resistance to do so, then deal with that feeling. Don't try to convince yourself, but just feel consciously that resistance. Feel uh, <laughs> it's not a pleasant outlook, but then see that feeling, what it is doing. As I often say, how to deal with emotions, how to deal with feelings. See what it is doing in the body and relax. And then if you do that when it's coming like this, then that resistance starts to disappear. That still doesn't mean that you have to lay, let him take advantage of you left and right all the time. You have the right to make your barriers and say, okay, that much I'm doing, but uh, and even if he complains, if you don't want to do so, then accept that he's not happy about it. But if you feel it's right, then you make your rules at the same time when you do it, but then you feel less threatened by it. Hmm.
Yeah, I'm the, there's really not much other help because I'm the only relative and he has no friends. Yeah. And well, my sister is, is there as a relative, but she's in Spain or right now she's in South America. So it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's not feasible. <laughs> it's. The, the, ment the, the physical feeling of the resistance, I, I, don't, I don't feel it so strongly. It, it's a lot of resist Immediately I go in, into a, an argumentation in my head, but maybe I should, I should try to really feel it what, it, what it's doing to me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And relax, not only physically, but energetically and mentally. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Self pity. <laughs> <laughs> and self pity is something that we just, when it comes, we grab it and look it in the face, and then it withers away. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> Whatever we are doing in our life, resistances may come. If we learn to accept that resistance and see what it is doing and relax and let it go, then the resistance fades away. Still, like I just said to Andreas, we have totally the right to make barriers that if we go for something, we go as far as we feel it's right and we don't have to be let others pull us beyond that all the time and take advantage of our, our being there. But if we start to feel sorry, about ourselves, then everything becomes a drag. I started to talk about it in the beginning of the satsang and we'll stop the satsang with that. When we recognize self-pity, that is really something we have to look in the eye and see what it is doing, how much it is draining the energy. And then learn to, in one way or another, learn to let it go. If there is no self-pity, then life becomes so much easier. If there is self-pity, everything is heavy. So let's be on the lookout where that enemy sneaks in and wants to eat our life energy and then learn not to do so anymore. I wish you all well. Are you? Are you? Are you?